Hey, I'm Michael, and today I'm going to be telling you what I think of this printer over here. It's the One How Duplicator i3 Mini. So many of you have been following me for a while and may have seen this machine. You may have even seen the unboxing I did on it. And it's time for me to wrap up this review so that you guys know what I think about this machine. Spoiler alert, I like it and it's going back. And that's why I've been delaying a little bit. <laughs> okay, seriously now, it's time to wrap this up. Let's get this done. So I've had a lot of quality time with this machine and I've come to appreciate the simplicity with which it prints and its ability to just sort of get the prints done. I like that. It's not complicated, it's just a little printer. Look, don't get me wrong, it's got a couple of flaws and one I need to sort a couple of those things out. Some of them you can do yourself, but it's not necessary enough for me to say, don't get this printer, because I really like what it does. And I've come to appreciate the simplicity with which it prints. It just gets prints done. And that's nice. It's simple and it ties in with what I think this machine should be used for. I'd like to start with something many of you have seen already and it's unboxing video and I'll put a link up here wherever that link goes so that you can watch that as well and it comes down to the out-of-box experience of this machine this thing came out of the box and was pretty much ready to go the only thing I had to put on was the spool holder which screws on with one nut and that's pretty much it level the bed do whatever you have to do with pretty much every other machine but there's no assembly and that's nice for a beginner. You don't wanna to have to assemble a machine if you have no idea what's going on with the thing. If you're very technically minded and you wanna build your whole machine from scratch, you're probably gonna build something a little bit bigger because, well, that might be what you're looking for. But I don't wanna discourage you from not getting this machine just because of the size. And I'll get into that in a little bit. So out of box experience on this machine, awesome. Two thumbs up, one thumbs up. The machine is easy to set up and the menus are easy to navigate. They simplified and they only have what you need for this machine. Again, something that's simplified for a beginner so they don't have to go fool around with settings they don't know about, don't care about, they just want to print. Thumbs up for that. The bed leveling wizard is straightforward and I had to do it twice just to get my head around what it was trying to make me do because I try and think ahead and I had to do it twice. But after that, I haven't had to touch it. And that's down to this thing. <laughs> the bed leveling wizard is straightforward. I had to do it twice because I tried to second guess it and think ahead. Don't do that, just follow the instructions. This thing is solid metal. And it means that once that bed leveling wizard is done, you pretty much don't have to touch it again. That is a definite plus for this machine. But as for the overall construction, it does have a few negatives. The extruder up here has a pretty large gap between the actual extruder and the throat of the tube. And sometimes it can be tricky to get that filament right through and into there. It sticks a little bit, and I think they can improve that by actually just making the throat a little bit deeper or a little bit more tapered so that it goes in. Alternatively, I think you could probably print something that would do just that, put it in there and it would solve your problem. So as far as that goes, that's my first time down for this machine. It could be better. They should have thought about it a little bit more. So now when you start printing, the size of this build plate can be misleading because it looks quite big. It's not. That that's on there is pretty much the maximum in X and Y that you can print. It's 100 by 100 millimeters or around four by four inches. I spent quite a bit of time thinking about the build volume of this machine. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? And it's harder to dismiss as I want bigger because well, bigger. I want a bigger build volume. Bigger build volume is what you want because uh, not necessarily. My first thoughts when I saw the print quality of this machine 
was, oh, if they make this bigger and stick a heated bed on here, this thing is going to knock the socks off the duplicator i3. And then it occurred to me that that's not necessarily true. Because the print quality of this machine really does relate in some ways to the size of the build volume. It's less mass and that means it can move a lot cleaner, a lot crisper and leave a lot less artifacts related to moving mass on the prints that you do. That's not a bad thing. So if you're printing at this size and this is efficient for you, you may consider this printer as a second printer even if it's sufficient for what you need to do with it. And that is kind of what I was thinking about. Is the build volume good or bad? Because you can get neater prints of it than you could with a bigger printer because of less mass moving around. Now, that's the first thing that, that was in, in my mind with regards to it. It then occurred to me that this machine is ideal as a beginner machine or for schools. And my feelings in that regard is because it's all closed up, it's a solid construction, there are no loose wires, there are no open electronics that people can get hurt on. It's a solidly closed, professionally built machine. The print volume in this regard is an absolute, absolute plus for things like schools. And I hear you ask why. Okay, so I can't hear you say anything, but I'm gonna answer you anyway, obviously. So let me explain. Printers are not cheap and schools have many kids. So many kids, few printers mean that you can't have one kid deciding that today he's going to be printing out. Think of the most popular printer of the week and he wants to print that full size because the bed on this thing is 10 by 10 by 10 and on a big machine it's 20 by 20 by 20 which means that it's not half the build size, it's one eighth of the build volume that you get on a bigger machine, which means one eighth of the time is the maximum that any kid is gonna be monopolizing this machine for. So more kids are gonna get a chance to print on the machine. That's a brilliant thing. It means more kids get to print, more kids get exposed to the machines. It's great for schools. So my conclusion on the build volume, it's not positive, it's not negative, it's if it is the right size for what you need it to do. And I could print more than 50% of my daily prints on here, including some absurd run of little elephone cell phone stands which are now all over my house. So with that said, I'm not gonna spend any more time talking about the size of the machine because you have to make up your own mind. I will, however, give you my final thoughts on the build volume. This machine prints as nicely as it does, partially because of the build volume. The reduced mass means that it can print really, really fast, and I printed things at 100 millimeters a second, which did drop in quality a bit, but not enough for me to say, oh, that's a bad print. So the reduced mass does mean it does print a little bit faster, a little bit neater, and it's nice for the size. So what are the negatives of the machine? Because there are a few, as I said. The electronics fan underneath the machine down here became noisy after a few days and look I'll be honest I'd rather have a noisy fan than a dead fan it's a quality control issue it's a cheap parts issue it's one of those things that they should address and they should just do better you know it might just be a bad batch of fans but I've seen it before in machines that come from China it's one of the things that are very low on the list of, of quality items We've seen it recently when the original Prusa Mark III switched from normal fans to the Noctua fans. They probably cost a bucket load more, but it's better quality components. And that's the kind of thing that they should start looking at. I'm not saying put Noctua fans in. I'm just saying get a better supplier, spend a little bit more. People will be happy with the quality they get from the machines. Because realistically, you can't send this thing back to China to get it fixed because that's what they want. And it kind of leads me into another thing that I'm saying is support local dealers because a problem like that, take it back to them and they would fix it. That's the kind of thing that you're paying extra for. It's that little bit of peace of mind that your warranty might actually get sorted out. Having said that, 
a fan is not a big thing. Take it apart, put a new fan in, it's gonna cost you about the same as a cup of coffee. So noisy fan, down. Post a comment if you'd like me to actually swap out the fan on this thing and show you how that's done. I'm quite happy to do that, but it's really not that difficult. Just unplug the mains before you do it. And maybe take a picture of the inside so you know where everything goes. But honestly, other than the noisy fan and the throat and the extruder, there's not much for me to complain about in this machine. Maybe this little screw down here is a bit of a thing and for schools, you know, you could get a kid that will scratch himself on there or something and you might want to address that. So you can cut that off with a Dremel or put a nut on there or something like that just to make sure somebody doesn't get hurt on there. But I'm nitpicking. The SD card is right here on the front. It's a convenient place for it to be, especially since some of the other machines are on the side at the back and are difficult to get to. Uh, the micro SD, I'd prefer to see a full size SD card on there just because it's easier to handle and harder to lose. Or in fact, just a USB thumb drive. The other thing about the SD card is this one auto mounts, which previous machines didn't always do. And that's nice as well because it just adds into the less fuss thing of the machine working every single time and being easier to work. Moving along, this is a PLA only machine. So it means that they've thought out of the box a little bit here. The fan actually is divided into two with half of it blowing over the hot end to keep that cold and the other half blowing down onto the print job to make sure that your print is cooled. It's one less thing to forget. It makes it a little bit easier to use and it's a little bit more convenient Right, speaking of easier, getting prints off this build plate isn't always that easy. Because what they've got on here is something similar to build tech. I doubt very much that it's original build tech, but it works the same. It really sticks. Now, usually build tech works by heating the build plate. And as soon as it cools, that little bit of shrinkage is enough to actually get your print job off. In this case, however, this isn't a heated build plate. What they want you to do instead of the heated build plate is use a glue stick, which conveniently comes with the machine. The glue stick goes down on the bed, you print on top of that, and after that you have to get it off. And it can be tough to get stuff off this build plate. It's not bad, you want your stuff sticking to the build plate, but you also wanna get it off afterwards. Another thing that I've seen recently, which I think will improve that, is if they actually change this top plate here to one of the removable spring steel ones with the same bolt that they've got on here, on there already, it would make it easier. You print on top of that, the build plate comes off, you pop off your print, it would just be a little bit more convenient. Sticky bolt surface is not a bad thing, it actually gets a thumbs up on that. But I do see room for improvement. That is possibly one of those version increment things rather than just you know something standard to change on there. I think it's worthwhile for them to actually just do a upgrade kit on it. You know, it's the kind of thing where, you know, you change the build plate to one with magnets in and the steel, steel sheet goes on top of that. I think that's not a bad thing at all. It, it's something they should consider. So what are my final thoughts on this machine? And would I recommend you buy it? Give me a second before I tell you because I will get to that. But before that, I'd like to say thank you for watching this video and if you've subscribed you know some of the changes YouTube have recently made have gotten some interesting responses online but it just means that I appreciate you watching you liking you subscribing that much more so thank you very much back to what we're talking about it's a very nice machine I've been mean, pleasantly surprised by it it's great as a first machine a beginner machine a kid's machine, a school machine, those sorts of things, it's great for. Or, if you're more advanced and you just want another little machine to print the odd little things here and there, it's good for that too. Don't dismiss it just because of the size. I had this machine standing in my office. I've got nine other printers. And I've very often printed on this machine, not because I had to for this, but just because I wanted to. It was convenient, it was nice to print, and it performed well. So. I printed a lot on it. I'm gonna miss this machine when it's gone. And for letting me use this machine, I'd like to say thank you very much to 3D Printing Store at Koza. The details are below. Check out their website, and if you're interested in buying a machine, 
please consider supporting these guys. They support people like me, who in turn give you guys the information to make up your minds if you want a printer like this or not. They also have other printers which you might consider. And once again, thank you to you guys. What I'd like from you guys, and I'm going to give you some instructions now because I don't just want to go through the normal stuff. I want you to look through and I want you to post comments. Let me know what you think of this machine. Let me know if you've got one. Let me know if you're thinking of getting one and how this video affected your decision. What else you'd like to see me talk about in the video? Because that sort of feedback helps me make better content that you guys want to watch. The other thing is, I like it a lot when you like my videos. I love it when you subscribe, but most of all, I love it when you watch. And I love making the content that you like to watch. So let me know about that as well. Then share it with your friends on social media because you'd be sharing something really cool with them. Most importantly of everything, when you're done with all of that, go out and make something. Goodbye.